If you're interested in attending Catholic worship, come consider the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located just four blocks up from Soldiers Field Road at 43 Holton Street. You can check out our website at stanthonyalston.org. That's stanthonyalston.org. And come to the 10 o'clock Mass and experience our chanted Liturgy of the Eucharist every Sunday. Let us offer our consecration consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we reach the middle of this second week of Lent. Let us continue to grow closer to you. Let us hear your word. Let us be uh, obedient to it. Let us be humble before it that we may grow closer to you as we continue through Lent. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today's first reading comes to us from Jeremiah. It's from the 18th chapter of Jeremiah, and it was where we see Jeremiah talking about these plots made against him, and then Jeremiah begging the Lord for his help. Now, what's happening is he's challenging the leaders of, uh, at this point, the Jews, and he's challenging them because they are going astray. The very next chapter, by the way, reveals to us how astray they are. They are uh, engaging in pagan worship. They are uh, sacrificing their children to Molech. I mean, these, like I always like to bring up when the, when that subject comes up, how astray they were. They weren't just saying bad words walking down the street. They were completely turned away from the Lord. They violated the Lord with the very first, uh, the greatest of all sins, the, breaking the very first commandment. They were engaged in idolatry. And why were they engaged in idolatry? Because the people who practiced, who the, the pagans who surrounded them, they weren't practicing idolatry because that's they, they didn't have the law of Moses to follow. They were these pagan cultures. It was the Jews who had the law of Moses to follow. So they were just practicing their own faith, and the Jews were called not to do that. So they would see that the pagans would appear prosperous, more prosperous than the Jews, and then they would say, well, then we have to be like them if we want to be prosperous. But remember, the Lord isn't calling us to be prosperous. He's calling us to be holy. And part of being holy is to rely on the Lord for what we need. And they wouldn't be doing that. They would say, hey, you know, that whole thing, the grass is greener on our neighbor's lawn and he worships Molech. Let's worship Molech. It was that kind of a thing, obviously not literally like that, but it was along those lines. So here, So when Jeremiah is telling them that they're walking down the wrong path, remember, they're challenging. He's challenging them, and they think they've found the path to the prosperity they're looking for, so he's challenging them to turn away from that path. They're not going to do that. And you can rest assured, part of that path is the people who he is challenging are very prosperous, but their prosperity is causing others to be very poor and they have closed their hearts to the poor. So you can see all of that coming together, and they're saying, we're not giving up anything, so we're not going to listen to Jeremiah. And if they're not listening to Jeremiah, who are they not listening to? They're not listening to God, and they were rebelling against God, and therefore they're rebelling against Jeremiah in their way of rebelling against God. So And Jeremiah is caught in the middle. He's saying, look, I'm trying to be faithful to you, but I'm being attacked. And listen to what they're saying. Listen to how they're treating treating me. Uh, You know, and Jeremiah's whole attitude was always, I never signed up for this. And if I did sign up for this, if my mother signed up for this, I wish she didn't. Um, when he says, you know, curse the day that I was born. So he is really deeply uh, suffering from this. But why is he speaking out? He's speaking out because the Jews are walking down the wrong path. And they are then, and they are now, by the way, the chosen people. So the Jews are walking down the wrong path, the Jews to whom he was speaking. And he's, he's speaking for the Lord saying, 
this is not going to end up well. And by the way, it doesn't. But that also reminds us that we have this role to play in our world today, and we are always going to suffer resistance. And and if we suffer uh, because the Lord has said, you're walking down the wrong path, this has to change, well, that's one thing. But if we are living our way as being faithful to the Lord, and we live the, our way of being faithful to the Lord by loving God and neighbor, if we live in a way of being faithful to the Lord, and we're dealing with challenges because people don't want to hear or don't want to witness or don't want to see our witness, then that's just the reality of what it means to to be what we're called to be as prophets in the world, just as Jeremiah was called to be a prophet in the world. I'll give you an example on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. You know that the most important thing I can ask you to do to support our program is pray. I'm going to tell you that right now. We need your support, and we need your support through prayer, because if you're praying, everything else will fall into place. So we're asking you to do that. So join us in prayer, and we humbly ask you for your prayers. So together, let us touch hearts, uplift souls, strengthen communities, and tune in, subscribe subscribe to our podcast, and be part of this divine journey. And thank you for your prayers. I can't thank you enough. May, may all your endeavors be blessed in your service to the Lord. So we are here uh, looking at this passage from Jeremiah, where he talks about the suffering that he encountered in trying to, in actually doing the Lord's work. And this is a principle that we see over and over again uh, in the Old Testament, but we also see it in the New Testament. And what we see is that reminder that there are spiritual forces that want to silence the voice of the Lord. And so you do have what essentially... Um, the church is always called a kind of a cleanup operation. We know that uh, Satan and death have been conquered, but there is that cleanup operation as we prepare for the kingdom of God to come. Now, right now I'm reading uh, a book about Romans from N.T. Wright, who is a theologian. He comes to us from across the pond, and he's talking about something that's really fascinating Whereas oftentimes our image has always been preparing to go to heaven. But he says, if you really read what the scriptures say, and you're going to find it's the opposite because Jesus promises a new heaven and a new earth. And we see in Revelation that the new heaven and the new earth comes down to the earth. So really, we are kind of like, and these, these are my words here, the, the forward... Uh, team that is there preparing the world for the coming of the Lord. So it's a different focus than often what we see in other different um, uh, teachings that we have within our church. But it also reflects on the importance of us doing our life, living our life in the faith, but also knowing that we will encounter resistance. And one of the great resistance elements we have is, remember, we believe in faith and reason. And so our understanding of how to live our faith comes from faith and reason, not faith or reason. And therefore, many of the forces that we're struggling with, and we're talking about spiritual forces that manifest through human realities. So we're not fighting human realities. We're fighting the spiritual forces behind them. But one of the spiritual forces that we are struggling with is this force of reason alone as opposed to faith and reason. And we want to work with faith and reason. Well, what's the difference between faith and reason and reason alone? Reason alone is human reason alone, and faith and reason is divine uh, wisdom 
and human wisdom. So therefore, it's that combination of the two. So we understand human wisdom, but we also understand a divine wisdom. And that's what leads us in this clash with those who are trying to silence the voice of divine reason, which means we have to be in touch with it. And that's so essential, which is why I'm always focusing on prayer and not just rote prayer. This is an ancient tradition of the church that our whole focus on prayer is not just rote prayer, but actually spending time and speaking with the Lord and and teaching, uh, learning from the Lord as he teaches us uh, in deeper ways by spending time in reading scripture, spending time in reading spiritual reading to deepen and bringing all this in prayer to deepen our uh, understanding of divine wisdom as we operate in a world surrounded by human wisdom. And we want to work with both. But obviously, divine wisdom is the more important of the two. But you don't want to do one or the other. You want to work with both and have our human wis- wisdom that is educated, so to speak, by our divine wisdom. So these are essential elements that are part of what we do, and we will always encounter resistance by those who reject these uh, ideas that um, that only work with human wisdom, or for some, only work with divine wisdom and not human wisdom. And so we're always going to deal with this struggle, but we have to understand there will always be this resistance, but we have to remain faithful to the Lord because in doing so, we witness, as Jeremiah did, despite the difficulties he had, Jeremiah witnessed to the truth of the Lord, and so too do we have to make that our focus. And that's one of the important things of Lent, to do, to learning and deepening our ability to do exactly that. We're going to talk more tomorrow on the second week of Lent. But in the meantime, have yourself a blessed day, and we will see you then. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Dot com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out, come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass, and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.